Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and I am here on the Carnival Panorama. I can't wait to show you around. Hopefully you're a subscriber so you're going to see all of the upcoming videos in this Carnival series. We'll have my review of the cruise, a dining review, even my Carnival favorites. So let's get started at the very top. We'll start our tour on deck 15 forward in the Serenity area. So the Serenity area is adults only. It has these upgraded furnishings. You see the padded chairs as well as the little half dome kind of cabana couch types. Now this area was very popular during our cruise. On our cruise we had 1,900 kids on board out of 4,900 passengers. It was more than 100% full because those third and fourth bunks were full. So a lot of people were headed up here to escape the kids. It was a, a school break week in California and the panorama is currently sailing out of Los Angeles. So that's why it was so busy. But up here in Serenity, you're going to find Fresh Creations. This is only open on sea days and it's the best salad bar on board. So you have your choice of lettuce, your choice of proteins like hams, anchovies, chicken, then all the different kind of veggies you can use to make it. Yep, that's even pasta there if you wanted to make a pasta bowl. The Serenity area has its own bar and then tables and chairs where you can sit and eat your fresh creations and lots of seating. I think they did a really good job uh, making this a large area because there are a lot of people that want to come here. They do have the umbrellas here at the front of the ship or again those half domes that can provide some shade. Now it does get very windy here while you're sailing so keep that in mind. Uh, it can make eating your salad a little difficult. Now this this side is basically the same as the other side. So it forms a complete U around the front of the ship. There's the other whirlpool. The whirlpools were warm on our sailing. So they were definitely hot tubs as opposed to, you know, some ships you have a little cooler temperature. I know if you saw my Norwegian vibe review, you know what, <laughs> how I feel about that. And then another shower and then bathrooms are in this area as well. Now this side, I have to warn you, if you sit on this side, which is the starboard side, you do hear screaming from the slides as well as from the splash zone down below. So it's not quite as serene as you get closer and closer to the water slides here that are a little more midship. The red slide is an inner tube slide, so you need to be able to grab an inner tube from the bottom and carry it up to the top. The blue slide is a body slide, and then a quick peek at the splash park with the smaller slides for the young kids. Cloud Nine Spa is located on decks 12 and 14. You'll enter on deck 12. You can make your reservations by calling or via the Hub app. The fitness center is also on deck 12, so it's a large fitness center, lots of cardio machines. It also has a spin studio or a studio for fitness classes. Upstairs, you'll find the beauty salon. So you have your pedicure chairs, your manicures, as well as your hairstyling. Note, no windows. Now heading down, we'll take a look, a closer look at that splash park. So there's those inner tubes you're going to need for the red slide. And then all the fun little sprayers and the big buckets. And then the smaller slides for the little kids. Now the, the slides do both come out here and then kids just kind of like run the circuit going around. Having a look here at the main pool area. So this is where the movie screen is so they have movies uh, dive in movies so you can watch a movie while you're in the pool and then the chairs are kind of set up to watch the movie as well heading in towards the center sports area the ship is kind of has these little zones so you had the zone with the splash park and the water slides now we're heading towards the middle where you're going to find the sports court the ropes course a lot of the outdoor activities that aren't water activities are all going to be here in this center. This is also where you're going to find your jogging track. So this goes around the deck 12. Please follow the arrows as you're making your way around. Uh, one mile is going to be seven laps. So it's a pretty good size uh, jogging track. I don't know if you saw my crown princess video, but I think one mile was like 20 laps on that. Uh, that ship. They have your foosball machine and then coming around here you're going to find your mini golf course and if you head up the stairs you'll find sky ride. It's kind of like a, a bicycle track in the air. You need to be at least 52 inches tall and weigh 250 pounds or less. You can also do the ropes course from up here. Now the ropes course is only 48 inches tall. Now all of these are going to require closed toed shoes and dry clothing so make sure you have that. There's been a lot of disappointed people online in the sky ride when they get to the front and they don't have those closed toed shoes. So here's a closer look at that ropes course, kind of walking around the, the top upper deck of the ship here, holding on to the different ropes and handholds. 
you do just line up for this. There isn't a reservation or anything like that. Down here, you're going to find the mini golf course. And some of the mini golf holes are up near the sky ride and ropes course entrance. So if you can't quite find them all, head up those stairs again. This is free and included. Just, you know, come up and grab golf clubs and a golf ball. You have the two pool tables there. Nice little seating area if you're waiting for somebody who's going on one of the rides. And then inside you have the clubhouse. Now, I really like that they did this because it can be raining. It can be really windy. So it's nice to have an indoor space. Now, look, you're going to have to hit that button to get into this door. So keep an eye out for that. You can try to yank it open, but it's very heavy. Inside we have a couple foosball tables that are are available you know to anybody any time of day you have the ping pong table uh, how many of you have tried to play ping pong outside on a cruise ship <laughs> let me know in the comments it's a little challenging uh, you have two more ping pong tables and then they have this interesting game that I hadn't seen before where you kick the balls it's like pool but you kick the balls instead of using a pool cue down to the side there you're going to find a stairwell that heads down to the camp ocean area so they have the three different groupings of kids as part of the included camp ocean program on the other side of the deck we'll find more chairs and seating now if you remember the vista originally had a hot dog cart up here we were sad to see that go uh, the uh, fun little take on ping pong there almost like a four square if you played that as a kid uh, your of course your huge chess board and then the other side of the jogging track continuing to go around this deck we'll come up to the sports court now this sports court is always busy and I, I'm always impressed it's always busy on embarkation people just get on and want to play basketball right away they also had soccer up here if you wanted to play soccer or football if you're not from the United States so lots of fun it's all the way caged in so you don't have to worry about uh, basketball going overboard then you come to the outdoor gym so if you don't want to work out inside, you, you want to work out outside, they have all of this different fitness equipment. I'm really curious, has anybody tried this or used this on a sailing? I never really see anyone on it. Now we're all the way to the back or the aft of the ship. This is the tides pool. Here you get a good view of Long Beach. So Los Angeles has two main ports for passenger cruising, the Port of Long Beach and the San Pedro Port. So you want to head to Long Beach if you're taking one of these Carnival Panorama cruises. You have a little peek there at the Queen Mary. This actually is a hotel you can stay at before your cruise uh, more outdoor equipment now we headed down a deck to deck 11 we're going to find more seating and chaise lounges overlooking the tides pool you saw that no smoking sign that's because we were bunkering fuel uh, we had just boarded we're getting ready to set sail so we needed a little bit of fuel now heading inside on deck 11 again we're all the way at the back or the aft of the ship we're going to find Gigi's and Cucina del Capitano now these are specialty restaurants but they're included at lunch time so you can come to either the Asian kitchen or the Casino del Capitano and enjoy a lunch uh, on the Gigi side which is the Asian kitchen they have uh, stir-fry bowls and noodle bowls on the Casino del Capitano side they have pasta bowls so this is the Casino side now it is an extra charge in the evening and reservations are strongly recommended you can make those through the hub app and then here on the Gigi Asian kitchen side uh, you'll see it's also really nice so definitely check that out if you want to try something different uh, back out on deck 11 you can walk around this deck so if you're looking for some different areas to hang out maybe the serenity area is a little too busy you can head this way lots of open deck space and they usually set out loungers here now this is not going to be one of my hidden gems and I'll show you why it's because you can't see the ocean when you're sitting down. Laying in this chaise lounger, you may be able to get some great sun, but all you're gonna be able to see is that white wall. The separated enclosed area is part of the Camp Ocean program. Now we're getting close to overlooking the main pool here. These chairs, especially these yellow chairs, are hot commodities because these are prime viewing for the pool games, for the movie screen. If you want to watch the deck parties instead of participate, these are going to be your best spots where you want to hang out. Now I'll give you a glimpse of that main pool area and then as we head back inside you'll note there's a couple extra places to sit. We're midship here. So this bank of elevators is going to be where you're going to find the entrance 
happens to Camp Ocean. And then there's that stairwell we saw earlier coming down from the clubhouse. Now we're down on deck 10, the main pool area where all the fun happens throughout the day. So on this side, we'll find the blue iguana cantina. It's open for breakfast and an extended lunch. On one side, you can get burritos. And then on the other side, you'll be able to get huevos rancheros in the morning and then tacos in the afternoon. They have a great toppings bar so you can customize it with all your salsas. And I love the watermelon jicama salsa. So if you want to try that, I would love it. There's also the blue iguana tequila bar on one side of the pool deck and the red frog rum bar on the other side. And they do have different cocktails. Now you'll find Guy's Burger Joint here on deck 10. So this is the delicious Guy's Burgers. They have four or five different options you can get. And then you can, of course, customize it at the toppings bar. Heading back towards the back of the ship, we're going to find the Lido Marketplace, which is the buffet. I love these hand washing stations. I wish more people use them, frankly, but makes hand washing super easy. If you have any food allergies, you're going to look out for the menu mate stand on the starboard side. They'll be able to walk you through the buffet, talk about any allergens that may be in the food items and what your best bets will be. So the, the front section has a wide variety of different options. Now they're all the same. So each station has the same food. So you don't have to wander around the whole thing. You're going to be able to find um, the options in one spot. So this, the gelato is do not miss. So find the gelato. It's freshly made every day and they have an incredible toppings bar. And then of course you have your fruit. You showed the salad before lots of seating available throughout the buffet, high tables, low tables. A lot of people play games. Now in the back, it is a different menu. So this is the comfort kitchen menu. So this is where you're going to find more of your like pot baked pastas, mac and cheese, different things like that. This is embarkation. That's why it was a little crazy. You'll also find the secret staircase to Gigi's and the deli. So the deli was open from, I think, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. during our sailing. You can order hot and cold sandwiches. It's all included. You'll Behind it, you'll also find another salad bar. Heading out to the tides pool that we looked at from above, this is where you're going to find the pizzeria to get your pizza fix. So it's made fresh right in front of you. You can special order or just take a slice of what they have available. So in, for included beverages, you have water, of course, iced tea, lemonade, and then some juices in the morning. So when you're around for breakfast down here at the tides bar, we have that whirlpool as well as the tides bar and then a pool to swim in and another whirlpool. So plenty of whirlpools on board if that's your thing. The today's catch is signaling that here we're going to find the seafood shack. Now this is an extra charge. Everything here is an extra charge. You can pre-order in the hub app. So if you see a line there, you might just want to sneak in an order on the hub app. And then they have different daily pricing based on the different seafood that you want to order. Now let's head down to deck nine. For the elevators, you press what deck you want to go to and it will give you a letter to stand in front of. And that letter will flash to kind of help you find the elevator. Then once you get on board, you'll see on on the panel what floor you're going to. So we are headed to deck nine to cabin 9292. This is an 8E balcony cabin. You do need a card to turn on the lights. It doesn't need to be your room card, so you can use any card you may have available. As you enter the cabin, you'll note this is set up as the two beds pushed together. Otherwise, it would be two individual twin beds. To the right is the closet area. The cabin had plenty of storage space. I was really impressed. So you have a two-sided closet with a full-length mirror, plenty of hangers. You can actually take them off the hooks. One side is for kind of full-length clothes, and then the left side you can pull down and make it a shelf or have it just be shorter items that you can hang up. So kind of your preference. Then in the bathroom, it is a small bathroom. I mean, we still are on a cruise ship, but it's a handheld shower spray, so it's nice and high. The water pressure was okay. It wasn't great. Then you have your sink with the set of three shelves on either side and then that magnifying mirror, which I thought was a very nice touch. You have your sofa and this really odd floating table that we didn't quite know where to put it. Uh, you have your desk area. You have three shelves there for all of your sunscreens and different items. You have two North American plugs as well as two USB plugs and a European plug. Then you have a very hard to open <laughs> mini fridge. This would keep beverages cold. This would not keep medications cold. You would need to contact guest services for a different fridge for that. Your hair dryer is located and attached through the middle 
drawer under the desk. You have a nice size television, then your bed area. So there are nightstands on either side of the bed. This does not have outlet. So you still need an extension cord if you have a CPAP machine, but you can turn on and off the different lights. There's a light switch over the bed to turn off the main lights and you get your towels when you first come. So just remember to check in and check those out and heading out to the balcony. It's a decent sized balcony, uh, very easy for both people to sit on the chairs and it's pretty private. There wasn't any, we couldn't see the people next to us. We couldn't see the people above us. And there's a little bit of shade there from the overhang. Now looking down, you'll see the tables and chairs on deck five. Now heading down to deck seven, we're going to find the sky zone. So this is the indoor trampoline park. This is an extra charge. They have different times based on ages and what they're doing. So they can set this up. They can set it up as basketball. They can set it up as dodgeball. Now going down to deck six, we're going to find club O2. That's the club program for the teenagers. So heading inside, it's basically just designed as a cool lounge for folks to hang out. They do have gaming consoles. Uh, this is going to be great if it's raining or, you know, you want to get out of the sun. You don't want to go down the water slide one more time. So they have, and then they have it set up basically for karaoke. Circle C is for ages two, 12 to 14. That's right next door. And you'll find a very similar setup here. So again, it's kind of set up as a lounge for people to hang out. There's gaming stations uh, to play different video games. They also have organized supervised activities um, and the area where they can kind of do their karaoke or watch a movie. So it really just depends on what the kids are interested in and what the camp counselors kind of have in store for them during the sailing. There will be a schedule just for them. Across the way is going to be the warehouse arcade. This is all an extra charge. We jokingly called it the casino for kiddos <laughs> because uh, you put all your money in and you don't really win a lot back. No, uh, but it's a lot of fun, especially uh, for the whole family to kind of play a game together. You have the air hockey table, all the different types of video games. There's some VR, not a lot, not as much as, you know, I featured in the Norwegian Prima Tour. So these are more kind of old school video games. And of course, you have different claw games um, if you want to try to win specific prizes. Heading down to deck five in the after back of the ship, we're going to find the Havana area. So the Havana area has two different parts. So the front part is open to anyone. And then the back pool area, which I'll show you in a minute, is only open to those folks who booked a Havana cabin. So it's a special exclusive area for people who book Havana cabins. But as you enter the Havana area, I love the theming here. You definitely feel like the Cuban vibe. There's tables for dominoes, lots of cool places to sit and enjoy the live music. There's a Latin band that plays here every evening. You also have this great bar in the back. There's specialty cocktails that are only available here at the Havana bar. Now heading into that exclusive area. So this is the area that's only for people who book a Havana cabin. They have their own bar, you know, it faces out to the pool area. They have a pool, the two different jacuzzi whirlpools, lots of upgraded seating areas with these different beds, the extra cushions. So a lot more options, especially on a full sailing like this, just to have this access to an exclusive area is a real perk when you're sailing on a full sailing. Heading towards midship, we'll find Ocean Plaza, the Ocean Plaza bar and area. This is where a lot of the evening activities and trivias took place. We had a great rock band on board called Cruise Control. They would play here every evening. A couple evenings, we even got the violinist. So this is our go-to spot after dinner each night. Now on either side outside, they have additional seating and umbrellas. So lots of great places to hang out here on deck five if you don't need a pool. If you just want to be outside, and enjoy those sea breezes without a pool, you can head here. Heading towards more midship, you'll find the Java Blue Cafe. Everything here is an extra charge. Some things may be included in your drinks package, but all of the food is an extra charge. The Carnival Insider shopping desk is next to it if you need coupons or want to have more information about the different shops that are available in the ports of call. You also have the pig and anchor smokehouse. So this is a bar, a brewery, and a restaurant all in one. These tanks may be filled with beer during your sailing, and it means it was just freshly brewed coming out of the tanks, getting ready to go into kegs or directly into the draft there at the bar. 
That's a quick peek at the brewery. You can also take a brewery tour. There's a nice stage, so in the evening as you were eating dinner, you could listen to the Ocean Duo. Now, this is an extra charge dinner or lunch is available on sea days. So for the sea days, the lunch is going to be outside and you come up to this little buffet. They serve you. They have all different kinds of barbecue options, smoked meats and sides, all very good. But then for the dinner, the dinner is inside. You order off of a menu and it's a la carte. Now continuing to walk outside towards the front of the ship. These are my hidden gem areas. You have the outdoor seating for the steakhouse Fahrenheit 555. And then you have these great tables and chairs with umbrellas. We we did not see people here during the sailing and our sailing was so full and these are terrific lounge chairs they have the extra padding you're by yourself there's not a lot of traffic down here now you're not gonna be able to get a drink there's not a waiter coming by but if you just want a lovely quiet place to enjoy the ocean maybe read a book head down here on deck five towards the front of the ship now we're gonna go back to outside the pig and anchor brew house just so I can show you a little bit more of what's on deck five so you have the photo gallery now this is all digital so these little screens you'll be able to put in your room number or your phone Leo number and pull up all the photos you took no more printing out all the pictures and taking a look at them you can also set up a special photo shoot here uh, just your family if you wanted to do something special heading towards the front of the ship will come up to Bonsai Sushi and Teppanyaki. So Bonsai Sushi has outdoor seating available. And I love how they did these little design touches. So there's not wind blowing through the whole of deck five. So you have to kind of go through this little tunnel to get outside. But this is the outdoor seating for Bonsai Sushi. Be sure to request it uh, when you head to the podium. And then this is the indoor seating. So they do have a proper sushi bar as well as these high tables. And the way it works is you'll just look at the menu and kind of check off the different pieces that you'd like. Every piece is an extra charge. Alchemy Mar was hopping during our sailing. This is the specialty cocktail bar with the alchemists to cure all, everything that ails you. Now this is now glassed enclosed. This looks down over the casino. This is a nice change of pace. Fahrenheit 555 is that extra charge steakhouse. We saw the outdoor seating for just a moment ago. And then next to sushi, you'll find the teppanyaki tables. You definitely want to make reservations for this as soon as you book your cruise. This books up so quickly because they only have two tables. So make sure to get a reservation, dinner every night, lunch on sea days. Next to the steakhouse, you will find the sing-along piano bar. This had to be a design flaw, right? That that open wall goes into the steakhouse. Now they can close it and they do close it in the evenings, but it's just so funny to me that they have the steakhouse open to the sing-along piano bar. That does mean the sing-along piano bar can't start till very late. This is the library bar. Now it's no longer a bar on this ship. It's just the library, but they have board games you can borrow. It's a nice place to gather. The art team actually set up here during our sailing. They were doing their little giveaways. Of course you have the candy shop that's available. And towards the front of the ship, this is where you're gonna find a lot of the gift shops. So this is gonna be around deck five, your different jewelry shops, your candy shop, any kind of that onboard shopping. Deck five is the more higher end shopping. And then you can also find this little kiosk if you need to check on your sale and sign card. Heading all the way to the front of the ship, we're going to find the Liquid Lounge. This is the theater. This is where the main stage shows took place each evening. We had four production shows during our sailing, which I was very impressed with. Heading down, we'll take a peek at Deck 4's seating. The floor seating, it's very hard if someone tall sits in front of you, but they have a little bar tucked in back uh, down on Deck 4. So if you want to sit at a bar and watch a show, that is an option here on the panorama. Now we're going to pop all the way down to Deck three and we'll come back to deck four don't worry deck three will find the guest services where there usually is a line and i'm not sure why the atrium bar this is always hopping and your shore excursion desks you can do a lot of the shore adventures booking through the carnival hub app uh, you don't have to do it at that desk and then as you curve around we're going to find the horizon restaurant now the horizon restaurant was the restaurant for people who had set dining time so we had an 8 15 dining time and we headed there now we're heading up to deck four because deck three does not go all the way through. There's a kitchen in the middle. So on deck four, we're going to have more shopping. Now this is more of your souvenir shopping. Deck five is more of your high-end jewelry shopping. Deck four, you're going to find more souvenir items just to kind of orient you when you get ready to do all of your shopping. The 
stage for the performers that face the atrium bars up here. There's a DJ there. The violinist played a lot. The guitar player played a lot um, into the atrium as people were kind of waiting to go into the Horizon restaurant for dinner. And then you have that seascape that changes throughout the cruise. And then you can see this is kind of your carnival themed uh, souvenirs. Now heading towards the back of the ship, we'll come across the casino. The casino has smoking and non-smoking sides. The ventilation was pretty good. I mean, there's only an aisle way separating the smoking from the non-smoking, but it wasn't, wasn't too smoky. Now, if you tuck in, you'll have to find the carnival kitchen. So this is where the cooking classes are located. They're just behind the casino and on the port side, you have a long table here where they kind of orient you to the class you're going to take. You can book these in advance. They are an extra charge. I recommend booking them in advance. Some people had some issues with it being overbooked. You get a station, so it'll be like two people and two people, each with their own burners and set up. And then the chef stands here and demonstrates the different food items. So you can see now, if as you come towards the sh back of the ship, you want to take a right at the elevators. Behind this, as we again heading towards the back of the ship, we're going to find the Heroes Bar. This is the sports bar dedicated to people who have served in the military and it has the different games it has some special cocktails a great spot to hang out there's definitely a crew that hangs out here every cruise so if you want to kind of make some friends this is a good spot to go to and they have incredible memorabilia and tributes along the wall so definitely if you don't want to hang out here definitely take a peek at everything along the walls Continuing to walk towards the back of the ship, we'll find the Limelight Lounge. This is where the comedy took place. So there was different comedy shows every evening. You do need to line up. It does tend to fill up quickly. It also turned into a nightclub uh, in the evenings. So comedy and then the DJ would take over. All the way at the back, we're going to find the Vista Restaurant. So this is the two-story, covers Deck 3 and Deck 4 restaurant. This was for anytime dining. So when you would go into the Carnival Hub app, you can ask to be added to a table and then it will tell you what the way times are and you'll be here in the beautiful Vista. Now we're going to head down to deck two to check out the family harbor area. So you can see the carpet even changes as you head into that family harbor. This is very similar to the Havana. This is a special category of rooms that comes with a little extra perk and that perk is this lounge. You'll have access to the family harbor lounge down here on two. It has a buffet available making it so easy. Just pop out of your room, grab a snack if you need it and then it has these great area lounge areas. So if you wanted to get together as a larger family you can hang out there. It also has you know your coffees, teas, and included beverages. You can see the hours here. They have your breakfast, afternoon snacks, and then evening cookies. So that's the carnival panorama. What did you think? Let me know in the comments.